Hello, welcome to Red Ted Art. It's all about these beautiful leaves. Goodness, we love this time of year. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, now, today I'm going to show you how to preserve leaves using ta -ta -ta, glycerine. Um, basically, you will need glycerine and some water, which is in the tap next to me. I'm going to take my beautiful leaves and I'm just going to give them a little cut at the bottom because I want them to be able to absorb as much of the glycerine as possible. Um, and then I'm going to prepare my glycerin water solution. So I'm cutting a bit off the little ones. It's a bit like when you're um, putting flowers in a vase and you want the, the, the flowers to absorb everything. Now we've got some really big leaves here as well, so I'm not quite sure yet. I guess we can try the big ones and see if they, how well they fit into my pot. Such beautiful colours at this time of year. And if you, I mean, we, I've, I've pressed leaves before, obviously that works. But pressing often means you lose a lot of the colours. So this is a better way of preserving the colour. So I've snipped off all the ends. Now I'm going to take my glycerine, which you get in the baking section. I'm going to actually use up the whole pot because I'm going to fill this shallow dish with glycerine. Once I've um, emptied all out, I'm going to use this as my measuring and I'm going to add, listen, can you hear the water there? One, Look, look, look. Two. So per pot of glycerine, you're going to need two um, thingies, you know, equivalents of water. So I'm going to put another pot of glycerine in. I mean, glycerine comes from the baking section and isn't that expensive. So, you know, this is not a bad... So glug, 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 second pot. And then I'm going to get another two bits of water. So one... In fact, I bought this glycerine years ago to make snow globes. And I have made snow globes, but I never used it all up. Now make sure you really, really mix it all up. So it's a good solution of mixed glycerine and water. So a good mix, good mix. Stir it all up so it's all... And then, so is that all mixed up properly? Can I see it? Yeah, looks good. And now you place your leaves in. Now the important thing is, is that they stay submerged. So I'm going to put all my leaves in and then I'm going to put a, a plate on top to make sure that they stay under the water, so submerged. Um, I particularly want the stems to be in because I want those to soak up as much of the solution as possible. So fill it up. Maybe I'll make this stem a bit shorter so it fits in my, my container. There we go. And then you have to leave it for two to six days. I'm just going to be checking on it and seeing how it's going. So get my plate, weigh it down. Actually, this isn't quite heavy enough. So this doesn't quite meet the bottom, so I get a slightly smaller one. Weigh it down. I'll probably, after I've done the video, change the plates to have something that's sort of touching all the way around. But basically the important thing is that they're weighed down and submerged and then you leave it. So we see you again in a few days and we'll show you what they look like. Bye. Right, so it's about four days later and you can see I weighed it down with a bigger bowl and a plate and it's time to see how our leaves have done. Now I suspect the bigger ones won't have done as well as the smaller ones because they weren't all the way in but having said that the stems were still sucking up the, um, the liquid so you know they should be still preserved. In fact they all feel quite waxy so I'm going to take the bigger ones out to the side. I want to work with the small ones first and then we'll come back to the big ones. Let's take the big ones out and we can take a look and see how it's all gone. So here's the little one. So the yellow ones seem to have responded quite well to the glycerin treatment. And what I quite like is they still have a little bit of a flexibility to them. So that looks quite nice, doesn't it? So I'm going to put these over here and let them... Now I want to see what some of the red ones have done because the reds were really the really pretty ones. So here's one of the red ones. Now I think it's done held the colour quite well. Red's actually the hardest when it comes to leaf preservation. Usually it goes really dark, 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 dark red. So although this is darker and not as bright as it was, again I think that's quite a good result. Let's have a look at some of the little ones. Here's a little red one. So this one seems to have lost a bit of colour, but it's still quite sweet. And then I'm going to compare it what it looks like to other preservation methods. 
So I think the best method here, or the best leaf that was responded to it, is actually the yellow ones. So this one used to be red and yellow and it's quite brown now. And I think the yellow ones actually have done really well. Also, if I look at the big ones, the big ones had some green in it. So we'll pat that dry. So this green, this, this green and yellow one has responded quite well too. So that's your technique for preserving leaves using glycerine and water. I quite like that they're still really flexible actually, because that gives it that real sort of leafy feel. Now, you just have to bear in mind that, um, you know, reds won't show as strongly, but that's why I do these experiments for you, because then you get to see from my experiments what works well. I also want to show you something else. So this is what a leaf would look like if you'd left it. I want to show you what my daughter did, which I think is really interesting. She taped them up. And actually the taped ones, it's a bit like laminating, have done quite well. The important thing is if you do laminate, you need to, um, but there's a little flower, you need to make sure that your plants are really, really dry before you do it. So laminating works quite well, but I know that over time we will lose some colour. But that red, compared to this one, look at that, it's done really well. Another technique that we tried out is adding PVA glue. Now again the PVA glue worked really well on the yellow, not so well on the red and quite well on these, these little red ones though, not so good on the green. So again PVA glue um, gives it some flexibility and also means it lasts a bit longer. PVA glue I think is quite nice for when you um, do art projects and you want to preserve the picture. And then give me a moment, I'm going to show you what the pressed flowers look like. So back again and here are the pressed flowers. Now again, here's a really good example where the red just doesn't get um, preserved quite so well. So I think my favourite actually is this glycerine leaf for red. Um, and sort of mediocre, I mean really good on this one particularly is, is the laminate. So if you want to preserve red, um, you know, you've got to try it out with the leaf, different techniques. Um, the pressing, you know, what's quite nice about the tress pressing is it is nice and flat and this is really good for projects where if you want to stick it say on a, on a vase or a lamp. So it does look quite good and actually if you hold it up against the light, there is um, a good amount of, of colour left, especially the green actually. So this is maybe, pressing's good if you have a bit of green left. And again, here's a yellow leaf and I think the press work really well on the yellow leaf. So different ways of preserving your autumn leaves so that you can then craft with them. Some laminating, some glycerin bath and the good old traditional pressing. So it's really up to you depending on what your project is to choose a method that works best for you. Hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to Red Ted Art. Bye!